if, if you, uh, Justin Ebert. Justin is going to help you with this demo. Uh, we are currently in the holodeck. I'm going to explain a little bit more as we go through. Okay, but imagine there is a um, there's a car uh, in, in the world somewhere, and uh, uh, we need to help it. And so the question is, how do we do that? Thanks, Justin. Let's check it out. So we're in holodeck. We'll just create a virtual reality car. We, we call this Drive Lab, and this is where we have a, a virtual car where we can take over our operator. Tim here is sitting on the side stage, and we can see sensors coming in from the vehicle, the remote vehicle that needs help. Uh, and those don't go anywhere, just hey. Oh, we're not going anywhere. Yeah, okay. Yeah, right. yeah we're not going anywhere. Uh, <laughs> we're going to wait and talk this through. So you can see there's a... This is so incredible, you guys. This is just utterly incredible. Yeah. First of all, I'm going I'm to hand it back to you in just Yeah, no problem. What you're looking at is live. Yeah. This is Holodeck. This is Holodeck. There's a virtual reality car. Okay? The virtual reality driver is sitting right there. His name is Tim Wong. Tim, could you just raise your hand? There you go. Tim is the virtual reality driver. He is inside this virtual reality car. He is inside the holodeck. He's not with us. <laughs> That's just a, a, a sack of humanity we call Tim Wong. Okay? And, and so Tim, Tim is currently in holodeck. He has got, he is looking at this virtual world. And you see the video that's being piped in? That is literally live. That is live right now. Okay? All right, Justin, take a look. Yeah, yeah, no problem. So, yeah, as, as Justin said, this is actually out back here and in a private area. And uh, let's bring in Tim. So, you can, can show him taking over inside this vehicle here. And let's show that he has control over the car as well. So, there's the real car out there. And so, Tim, if you can turn the steering wheel a little bit, you can see that we've got. Oh, come on, cut it out! Oh, that's fine. <laughs> Yeah, so he engaged. Are you guys are you guys putting this in your head right now? There's Tim in reality, but he's inside virtual reality, controlling a car that's in reality, but it's not here. <laughs> are you guys following me? Okay. <laughs> so, it's like three layers of inception right now. The mind clearly exploded. We, we've engaged remote drive, you can see, so he knows he has... I still remember when we were talking about this, creating this, the people that were explaining to him, we're going to build this thing. Like, okay, explain to me one more time. Yeah. You, you, you can't understand until you see it. Then it all makes sense. Okay, so uh, I think we, we've, we've seen this. Let's, let's take a look from, uh, from Tim's perspective for a second here. And uh, we can have him take off and actually drive the car. As you can see, he's blocked. But there's a vehicle here that's doing some unloading. And uh, Tim looked down just a little bit so we can see your perspective. And he can, he can now operate this vehicle around this obstacle and maybe take it to a safe spot in the parking lot for us. And hopefully, all <laughs> so we're doing this really slowly and safely in a cordoned off area here, and he's going to try to turn off into the parking lot. Now you can see a little bit on the left here. There's Tim is in off. there, guys. <laughs> There's Tim right there, the invisible man. And it is very broad. You can see all the screens and you get a full perspective of, of everything that's going on in the car. In the future we can we can represent all kinds of LiDAR systems and everything. Slowly, slowly. So yeah, maybe we can take a look there. Look at him! Uh, there he goes! Go Tim! There's the team right the racing after the car there. Yeah, let's see if and he and he, you know, it, look, what Tim is experiencing right now, he's sitting inside a car, and he feels like he's inside a car, and he feels the car around him. And that's why he's able to, look at that, he parked in the parking space. <laughs> nice job, Tim. Yeah. Um, hey, guys, thank you. Thank you, you guys are amazing. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Ladies and gentlemen, what do we call this? I have no idea! Amazing. Yeah, that's right. We call this amazing. <laughs> so guys, I'm so proud of you. This is, this is, this is such incredible work, and this is such an important work. And, and as we know, uh, one of, the, one of, the, one of the, the amazing capabilities of the future of autonomous machines is we can go somewhere that we otherwise can't. 
We could, we could, we could be uh, fixing something. The robot could be fixing something, rescuing someone. And now we could literally, through VR, teleport ourselves into the mind of the autonomous machine and be there. Does that make sense? Teleportation. Teleportation. And VR is our way of doing that. VR augmented with autonomous machines is our way of doing that. Teleportation. The future has arrived. Pretty exciting. Thanks a lot, guys. I'm so proud of you. a brand new, a revolutionary computer graphics technology we call RTX. Our dream come true after all of these years, from architecture to algorithm to AI to integration into all of the APIs in the world and the tools around the world, we have introduced real-time ray tracing to the world finally. We call it the RTX, and it will run on a revolutionary workstation called the Quadro. GB100 with 32 gigabytes. We also announced our brand new NVIDIA AI platform. All of the new updates from the largest GPU in the world. $1.5 million of value. All for my friends for $399,000. And NVIDIA's DGX2, two petaflops, two petaflops of computing, incredible amounts of memory, 500 giga, 512 gigabytes of HBM2. Tensor RT and integration, deep integration to TensorFlow and Calby has expanded our ability to reach the hyperscale workflows around the world. In aggregate, speeding it up by 100x, which allows us to enable people to buy more GPUs and save more money. And not only that, we made it easy to deploy. Kubernetes is now on NVIDIA GPUs. Kubernetes on NVIDIA GPUs. Just really, really exciting. And don't forget, what makes Tensor RT such an incredible achievement, and what inference is so hard is because of one word. You guys know that word? Blaster, that's right. And so, <laughs> what a great audience. What a great audience. And then lastly, in our driving stack, we introduced our one architecture, we're in, we'll be in production by the end of this year with our first full ASOL D, full driving computer called Xavier and Pegasus, and the next generation called Orin. But mo one of the most important things we can imagine doing is to create a simulation environment so that the automotive industry can cover the gap between one million cars, one million miles, and one trillion miles. That level of, of that many, that orders, that many orders of magnitudes of difference in coverage has to be covered in some clever way. We call that drive sim running on our server. We call drive constellation. And we introduced two new platforms that I'm going to talk about more and more and more every single year so that we can engage these new industries. One of them is Isaac, our robotics platform, and Clara, our medical imaging supercomputing platform. Ladies and gentlemen, it's great having all of you here. Thanks for your support, and have a great GDC.